terror gets evolved. Here's your look at the new Hyatt Toys exquisite mini Alien Covenant Neomorph. The Neomorph was an endoparasitoid extraterrestrial species encountered by the crew of the USC SS Covenant. Exquisite Mini is a newsstand series for 118th super articulated action figure line from the folks over at Hyatt Toys. Even though I know this is probably not going to be how you're going to display the Neomorph, we're still going to stand him straight up, stand it straight up, to figure out how tall the figure stands. I'm going to take the tape measure into the very top of its head. The Neomorph stands at about 4.1 inches in height. In centimeters, centimeters, let me do that right now, 10.5 centimeters tall. And again, even though this isn't going to be the way you're going to display these figures, this one's a little bit harder to stand. This is what it looks like next to the Xenomorph. Now the Xenomorph is a lot taller than the Neomorph. The Neomorph ultimately gets dwarfed by the sizing of the Xenomorph, providing I can actually get this one to stand. Just get the tail to bend here a little bit. There we go. All right, perfect, beautiful. Even though this is, again, not how you're going to display the figures, I just want to kind of show you how smaller, how much smaller the Neomorph is to what then would later become the Xenomorph. I still like the sizing of both of these, and it clearly shows that Hyatt Toys, when they are producing these smaller 118th scale figures, they're not simply reusing the same molds. Clearly, they wouldn't be able to use the same molds as the two different creatures are so distinctly different from one another figure actually gets a decent amount of accessories. We'll look at the tried and true go-to. Hyatt Toys includes the floor graded, uh, floor display based for the inclusion here of the Neomorph. If you look at this one, and then you look at the one that we've already looked at before, they look like they are identical to one another. In fact, carving copies to one another. You see in the, the peg placement are in the same place. They're just again copies to one another even like the back and the back side here can be attached the exact same way uh, they come with these little eye connector points we've seen these before and uh, you just connect the one base to the secondary base and then instantly bingo bango you've got yourself a larger diorama to display these figures with what was interesting though i just attached this and i moved this one to the side uh, when we looked at there it is once again, the Xenomorph. The Xenomorph actually didn't have connector plugs, holes on the undersides of its feet. So really like these pegs served no purpose whatsoever. Unlike that though, the Neomorph actually does have pegs on the undersides of its feet. I did find though, when I was attaching it to the display stand, it seemed immediately that the peg seemed too big for the hole. In fact, I might've even stretched the hole just a little bit more by twisting the foot in place to eventually get it lodged into the peg. This may involve several efforts to do this before you eventually land literally onto the peg and you get the figure to stand upright. Again, you may want to just wiggle it a little bit, but you can eventually get the figure to stand on top of the display stand. It again, may not likely pose it with the legs standing straight. Instead, you're probably favor instead having the legs bent and of course the feet the hind feet sort of arched back like this. And the figure does still stand, still successfully stands. A lot of that actually can be chalked up to the same hero, the unsung hero that also the Xenomorph possessed, and that is the tail. The tail does have a wire frame, so again, you can adjust it depending on where you wanna have the tail placement. I did notice though that the bottom end of the tail doesn't have the wire frame. The wire frame, I think, actually stops at around there where you can bend the tail. Everything else after that is just soft, like a soft rubbery plastic. But the tail definitely does help a whole lot when it comes to displaying this guy. I did also sadly notice when I get this figure out of the packaging that uh, his its one knee is a little on the loose side. This one's not so bad on this side, but sadly the one knee is a little on the loose side. So. When I got him to stand, it was a little bit more trickier, but again, like you've got that tail to assist with that. Uh, while the figure is just 
perched and standing there to attack something. We're gonna run through the rest of its accessories. Again, we just hopefully get these guys, get this one to stand properly. There we go. Thank goodness once again for the tail. So the accessories that also come included with the figure is you get yourself a smaller uh, starting point, the face hugger. And again, the face hugger doesn't look that much different than the face huggers that we've gotten before. Uh, still, once again, the tail. This has no posability to it. There's no wire or anything on the inside, the interior of the tail. And then you've got the adjustable. Again, only by the fact that it, the only virtue to it being adjustable is the fact that it's made of a softer plastic. But the legs do sort of fan out. There's a close look at what the face hugger looks like. If you have any one of the other Haya toys, uh, Colonial Marines, for example, you could just attach that to its face. We'll look at maybe that at a, at a future video. The other thing it comes included with is a pair of interchangeable hands. Now the hands that are currently in the sockets, uh, I will do a comparison for for you. The fingers are close together. They're all four fingers are all lined up like soldiers. This one here, these interchangeable hands on the other hand, see what I did there, actually have a split in the middle, sort of giving like a Vulcan live long and prosper. Although I have to admit when you're, the ir irony of all that is you're not gonna very live long at all if you were to come across with one of these Neomorphs. And just to show you how that changes on the hands, if I just grab the one hand from the socket, pull that out, you're treated immediately to a very small peg. Still push forward collectors, and just attach the hand to the uh, to the uh, the ball joint here. I don't know if it's just me, but I do find like there's a slick coat to the figure. Not necessarily like there's a residue to it, but I find just the uh, the varnish or the uh, the sealant or something that they've put on the skin to give it sort of that sheen does ultimately cause the figure to feel like a little on the slippery side, especially coming to the aid of, uh, well, not the aid of when you're putting the hands in place. But there's the one hand, and then on the other hand, it's actually interesting that the swapped out hand doesn't seem to have as much paint on it that it does notice, you do notice it a little bit more when you are comparing it next to the arm in which it's attached to. This other hand, the defaulted hand, still has that additional pink that's been added kind of in the little recessed areas of its fingers, uh, which does is, again, a carryover to the arms. The other thing that it does come included with is this head. A rather scary portrayal, both the closed face and mouth, and then the open jaw area there of the, the interchangeable head. There was something very scary and very eerie about the Neomorph design. Sort of the absence of details kind of made it very much more terrifying, I found, than even like the Xenomorphs. It has a almost slug or maggot look to it as well. I've never been a fan of maggots. I don't think many people are fans of maggots, but it sort of had like a maggot look and uh, I guess just design to it. Uh, so you can change out the head. Uh, one thing I did notice, though, is when you are taking the head off, or even when you are posing the head, the head should have, or feels as if, there's a hinge joint right here. Now, while I can move the joint down very stiffly, I do find it does have a stopping point. It doesn't seem to go all the way back. So no matter what head I change it to, whether it be this head sculpt here, or this one right here, I find like the head doesn't go as far back as I would like it to and just that tabs just into place. So the head, unfortunately, for the Neomorph always looks like it's sort of pointing down, unless you just want to compensate it by bringing the torso up. The rest of its very absence of details, again, kind of really makes it a much more scarier looking designed creature, in my honest opinion. The figure does translate it quite well in a smaller 1 18th scale, right down to these very prickly uh, points of spikes that are sticking out, protruding out from its skin. Yes, in fact, actually running your finger across it, you do notice that there's a little bit more of a prickiness, especially if you are trying to put the head on, if you are putting pressure against these, you'll feel it right away pushing into your skin. Uh, it's a, got a more of a malnourished look to it, kind of as if you would see a lot more details underneath a translucent skin. Kind of wish, in fact, that we would have gotten at least one more movie featuring a Neomorph before we immediately wanted to get so 
quickly rushed into the more origins of the xenomorphs, but I did kind of want, if anything, another movie that would have featured a neomorph. I just kind of really like the designs of these. It's sort of part, it looks part maggot, and it looks part like a newly born rodent. How's that for a description? I think where I'm seeing a lot of the rodent aspects are more so in the tail, especially how it's got that slight more flesh tone near the end of its tail, well, then it continues on its merry little way into more of a, a whiter pigment here. Again, I don't know if you can see it, but the camera hopefully can capture just that slick feel that I'm talking about here. All of the figure, as you're moving your fingers along it, you can just feel that it's got a much more of a slimier, slick feel to it. Again, nothing's really coming off of the figure. It's just the, uh, the ceiling, the varnish that they put over top of it. The sheen really does add to its more slimier complexion. But again, it's a really neat looking figure. If unfortunately, sadly, for the fact that it is a little loose in the, uh, the one knee. This knee, not so bad, but this knee is a little on the loose side. So we'll, we'll, we'll look through its posability. We sort of already touched base on the head, but so the head rotates all the way around via that ball joint. It should, in theory, hinge down and up, but I can't, oh, there we go, there we go. It finally gave way, finally just said, you know what, this guy's had enough hard times. We're, we're, we're gonna just, we're gonna bend that head. We're gonna bend that head, and it, as you can see, does bend all the way back. You'd be surprised how much time I've been spending trying to bend that, all the while running the risk that that peg was going to break off. That might have actually been one of the reasons why I didn't apply as much pressure for fear that that peg would have broken off. But there you go. There you go. Bob's your uncle. So the head does arch all the way back and it arches forward. Uh, in some regards, you can also angle the head back and forth. Not much though. The arms rotate all the way around. These very spindly arms rotate all the way around. You can also hinge them out. You can bend at the elbow. You can rotate the hand all the way around as an upper torso ball joint. Again, you're, every time you're doing this, you feel as if these are pricking into your skin. The legs hinge out. Uh, you can move them all the way really around if you wanted to. Bend at the knee in one joint, bend in the knee in a secondary joint. And then as well, you've got the hinge joint in the hind leg. So far, knock on wood, I haven't had any issues with the hind leg being overly loose. It's really just, again, that one knee. And uh, that will, of course, not be, I have to stress this as well, it's not going to be across the board as well. It just so happens to be on this particular figure. Again, I really like the look of this design, not only in the movie, but certainly how Hayatoys has translated that to a smaller 1/18th scale terror. This terrible, terrific, see what I did there, collectible look good next to the xenomorph and again i like the fact that the scales are off on these uh, certainly they would not be the same scales in the movie and luckily for that they're not also the same scales when you get these ones in hand neomorph sadly is firmly planted in a universe that never really resolves itself sure we're promised that we're going to be getting answers that we've been asking for all these years and finally get t connections tying itself directly to the original alien film and with both prequels now done and the movie franchise now apparently seeming to be in spatial limbo, maybe we never will get the answers. Near the end of the last film, we sort of get a closer connection, but it's still not in place. Many fans did really want a connection directly to the original Alien film, and maybe that never will actually happen. Still along the way, we get these little hiccups, one of which being the Neomorph here. A rather nice, primitive design to what we eventually would get with the Xenomorph. Again, it kind of looks like a bit of a maggot. It looks something like an unborn or just recently born rodent. And maybe that's why I like this design so much. It still feels Xenomorph, but it clearly isn't. Its slimy, wet, slicked body really does translate well to the smaller 118th scale. I think Hayatos has really done a great job on this figure. Just sort of watch your fingers though. As the back spikes, literally the back spikes on the Neomorph are prickly, and I've already felt a couple of times where I feel like it almost pricked my skin, causing blood. Luckily, it didn't cause blood because I'm sure the Xenomorph would have attacked me and finished the job. But still, if you guys are interested in picking this one up for yourself, all of the new Alien Covenant lineup should be available now in comic book stores if you guys are interested in picking these ones up for yourself. Today we were having a look at the new Hyatt Toys Alien Covenant. This was the exquisite mini Neomorph, a really fantastic looking figure with a, a ton of cool interchangeable parts. 
By the way, also I like the fact that this one actually does attach to its display stand, which sadly wasn't the case with the previously looked at Xenomorph. Hey now, if you guys want to go back and have a look at some of my other reviews for Haya Toys, there's a whole playlist just for Haya Toys. And also, if you haven't done so already, make sure you hit that little subscribe button down below as new videos are always coming to this channel. As quickly as this video is finished, expect a new video to be right around the corner, literally and figuratively. I guess it's more figuratively than literally. Either way, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys next time.